Welcome everyone. We are excited that you're joining us here on this Mother's Day worship. And so we invite you to sing with us, to worship with us this morning as we lay ourselves down before the Lord. Christ, we worship the true God as we were baptized in his name, in the name of the Father, the Son, 
and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's worship. of faith this morning we have the first article of the Apostles Creed and its meaning from Luther's small catechism I believe in God the Father Almighty maker of heaven and earth what does this mean I believe that God has made me and all creatures that he has given me my body and soul eyes ears and all my members my reason and all my senses and still takes care of them he also gives me clothing and shoes, 
food and drink, house and home, wife and children, land, animals, and all that I have. He richly and daily provides me with all that I need to support this body and life. He defends me against all danger and guards and protects me from all evil. All this he does only out of fatherly divine goodness and mercy, without any merit or worthiness in me. For all this it is my duty to thank and praise, serve and obey him. This is most certainly true. There's a song in my soul And I feel it stirring in me This I know for sure That your love is like a flood And your mercy never ending I give my song to you There's a joy in my soul it rises like the morning This I know for sure That your grace is enough And your promise never breaking I give my song to you For all of your goodness is like a whale Goodness is like a whale running over. 
Church, we find ourselves in the third week of our current sermon series, Unbreakable, building our lives on God's promises. We kicked off talking about Adam and Eve in Genesis chapter 3 with the fall, where sin enters into the world. And the first thing God did was offer them a promise that he would send us a savior. Last week, we talked about Noah and God's promise to him and to us that he would send us a sign, the sign of a rainbow that lets us know of God's love and mercy that he has upon us. And this week, we see a shift as Genesis chapters 1 through 11 was on a downward spiral. We're going to see in chapter 12 where God enters in and continues with that promise of a Savior, of this promise to Abram that he provides for us. It's the reason why our profession of faith was that first article of the Apostles' Creed, talking about all the things that God does for us each and every day, how he provides for each and every one of us. When we think about Abram, and some say Abraham, and it's not really a big difference. Abraham means father. Abraham means the father of many. One theologian says Abram means daddy, and then Father Abraham actually means big daddy. And so the father of many nations has the promise to him that his offspring will be like all of the stars in the sky and that through him will come that messianic promise of a savior. When we think of Abraham and his faithfulness and him being a central figure for Christianity, also for the Muslim faith and for the Jewish faith, we see this hero that is credited to him to be a man of incredible faith. We would think that he must have came from a great family, from a religious family. But when we dig deep, we see that this is God moving in the life of this hero, of bringing him out of trouble and using him for God's plan of salvation. And that from the beginning of this downward spiral, that there's been this lineage, this ray of hope that continued after the murder of Abel through Seth, the next son of Adam and Eve, and then it moves to Enoch, the man who walked with God, who never died, who was called to heaven in a whirlwind. And then we find Methuselah, the man who lived the longest in all of human history. And then last week we talked about Noah and his faith and his patience. And then we know that his three sons and their wives were on the ark. And through the one son, Shem, would continue this promise of God to Terah, the father of Abram. This one ray of hope through this lineage that God is working through this downward spiral sees that it's about to come to an end. Because Genesis chapter 11 tells us about Abram. We see that his father was Terah that he was married to Sarai, who eventually becomes Sarah, which means princess, so he has that to deal with. And Sarah is barren, unable to have any children. And so this lineage is about to stop. They find themselves in moral bankruptcy and in spiritual decay when it comes to Abraham and his father and their family. It tells us there in chapter 11, that they resided in Ur, the capital city, which is now in the modern day Iraq, was the capital city of the Sumerian Empire. And in that city was this incredible trade center. No stimulus package was needed when you lived in Ur. It was the place of the commerce and the trade in this civilization. We don't know exactly the reason why, but it tells us that Terah is going to move his family from Ur to Canaan. And when you look on the map there, you see Ur around 5 o'clock, and you see uh, the promised land Canaan straight over west. But they stop in Haran, which is way 12 o'clock north. Why are they moving in that direction? Because if they just would have went from east to west, they would have had a long journey through the desert. And so when you're traveling with livestock, you follow the water. 
And as they're following the water with the Euphrates River, they stop up there in Haran. It doesn't tell us exactly why they stop there, but they stop. And as they stop there, that is the place where God is going to call Abram into this lifelong message to where God is going to provide hope where this lineage was about to stop. And we see this promise of hope in Genesis chapter 11, verse 30, where it says these words, Now Sarai was childless because she was not able to conceive a child. And in the end of this hopeless reign, God enters in, and he's going to take a barren woman, Sarai, with Abraham, and they are going to have the offspring where the Messiah is going to come. And a man who's unable to have a child with his wife is going to become the father of many nations. And so the same holds true for us in our life, where God enters into the messiness of our lives and he promises us hope. And as he promises us hope and he teaches that to Abraham and to the chosen people, we also see that he provides grace, that this was nothing that Abraham did, but this is all work of a merciful Lord because it tells us about Terah, Abraham's dad, and about where they are when it comes to their spirituality and the relationship with God, that they are not worshiping the true God of Israel, that they are worshiping the pagans and the idols. It says this about his family in Joshua 24, verse 2. It says, Joshua said to all the people, this is what the Lord, the God of Israel says. Long ago, your ancestors, including Terah, the father of Abraham and Nahar, lived beyond the Euphrates River and worshiped other gods. Abraham comes from a non-believing family. He is raised there worshiping pagans and idols when God enters in. Abraham didn't bring anything to the table. It was God's grace, his unmerited favor that showers upon Abram. And he tells Abram as he calls him that I'm going to move you out of this pagan idol worship and you are going to follow me to a land I will show you. And that's the wonderful promises that we see this morning in Genesis chapter 12. Look at verse one, where God has provided hope And he has also provided grace. Now he provides direction for Abram. It says this. It says, the Lord said to Abram, go from your country, your people, and your father's household to the land I will show you. I love how the King James Version translates it. It says, get thee out. What does it say in the Hebrew? From God to Abram? It says, get yourself out of this place out of this culture, out of this environment of your family and friends and everything that you have known for 75 years of your life, and I am going to take you to somewhere new, to a land I will show you. There's those times where God enters into our life today in the messiness of life, and he calls us to get out of certain situations, out of certain relationships, and things that take us away from our relationship with God and say, leave those things and come. Come and follow me. As God provides direction for Abram, he provides direction for you and me. In his word, he tells us what's right and what's wrong, and that we should follow him and that his word is true. When he says this to Abram, we can only imagine all of the questions he would have had. What do you mean, leave my family, my friends, and my culture and get out and go to a place where you're going to show me? Where is this place and what is going to happen? God never tells him how the future is going to unfold. He just says, be faithful. God says the same things to you and to me, that the Christian life, it is a quest. It is a pursuit of a deeper relationship with God. When it comes to our faith, we're supposed to trust and we're supposed to follow. We don't get a nice spreadsheet with all of the information and all of the data that tells us exactly how everything's going to be. No, this is a quest and that this is a journey 
There's going to be ups and downs, and there's going to be difficult parts in life, and there's going to be blessings, and there's going to be obstacles. And through it all, God says, you're not going to know all the information. But what you need to know is me and to listen to my voice. And that's what he says to Father Abraham. He says, go to a land, to a place I will show you. I think so many of us today are searching for that direction, but we get in the way because we want so much information. You and I, how do we get from place to place when it comes to our travel? Most of us use that smartphone. We use that GPS. We punch in the destination. It tells us how long it's going to be till we get there. It gives us an estimated time. We get options of different routes and the quickest route. It even will tell us when there's traffic or construction and that you're still on the quickest route. When we get off path, it will give us directions and will talk sternly to us to get us back on track. We love all of that information. But that's why Abraham was considered a man of incredible faith because he didn't have any of that. He was just supposed to leave everything that he had ever known and to follow God who speaks into his life for the first time. And Abraham obeys. That's what it tells us in Hebrews chapter 11, that by faith, Abraham obeyed the word of the Lord and he trusted in him, not even knowing what the future held in his hands. And that's why he's known for this incredible witness to follow the Lord to the land that he would show him. In verse two, we see the next promise that God provides salvation. He says, I will make you, Abram, into a great nation, and I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. God fulfilled those promises that through Abraham would come this great nation, the Jewish people, and that through that people would come the Savior and the Messiah of the world. God's just not blessing one nation. He's blessing one nation to bless the entire world world. That's been the mission of God from the very beginning in Genesis, to reach all people with his promises, his love, his grace, and his hope. And as he does this, he says to Abram, I will make your name great. And here we are thousands of years later, still talking about this heroic man who had this obedience in following the Lord, and that through him would come that blessing of a savior in Jesus Christ. He provides salvation through Abraham. He also provides protection. Look what he says in verse three. He will says, I will bless those who bless you and whoever curses you, I will curse. And all people on the earth will be blessed through you. We see the blessings and the curses in Deuteronomy 28 and Leviticus 26. All of those blessings are the rewards for our obedience when we follow the Lord and when we follow his word in our life and that we don't do our own thing, but instead follow God's path for our life. And those curses are the consequences, the consequences when we do our own thing and that we go against the Lord and his word and his will for our life and those consequences that come into our life. He's laying that out for Abraham and for his people and for his nation all the way at the very beginning here in Genesis chapter 12. And we see that as long as the Israelites are faithful, we see blessing. When they're in the midst of their unfaithfulness, we see the consequences. And that's when other nations come up against them because they're on this quest of following the Lord. All of these promises that God gives to Abraham, he still gives to you and to me today and that we can trust in them. And not just trust in them, but build our lives upon them. For so many of us, we know many of the promises of God, but it has to move from just knowing them and believing them and living our life upon them. That it gives us that incredible solid foundation that when things go array, that we realize everything is okay because God is still there and his promises still are true. You know, when I think about Father Abraham, I think about the modern day Abraham in my lifetime, and that I've learned so much about him that I didn't know, even though I grew up with him, being a father to many kids throughout our country, 
until the recent movie came out about him. His name, Fred Rogers. We know him as Mr. Rogers and that show for 33 years. But what I didn't know is that he was an ordained pastor of the Presbyterian Church and that that show was his ministry of how he served the Lord. That when he looked at TV and what was there for kids, he said, we are doing kids a disservice. They need something so much better. And he knew that he was then reaching out to kids all across the land, some in stable homes, some in some homes that are okay, and some, he was the only stability in homes that were full of chaos. That's why he started every show for 33 years the exact same way. Him coming through that door with that smile, starting to sing that song, to then move down the stairs and over to the closet, to take off his suit coat and to put on that sweater and zip it up. He would then go over and sit down, take off his dress shoes and put on his casual shoes, singing that song, inviting those kids into a relationship. Won't you be my neighbor? And what he was teaching them was all the good things in life when it comes to faith, when it comes to morals, and when it comes to values, because he knew and believed that we live in a scary world and in a world that was fallen. And he knew that the children were being raised in this world. And so that's why he wanted to give that consistency day in and day out. And at the end of his legacy, what's his God story? That he was a faithful Christian man who was very disciplined in the word and in his ministry and in his show. And he finds himself in the TV Hall of Fame, the winner of four daytime Emmys. He won a presidential award, the greatest award that citizens can receive. And what did he do? He didn't come up with that great flashy idea or that incredible moment that only lasted a second like the society we live in. He proves to us what is true heroic faith. It's being consistent day in and day out. It's not that big thing for that big moment. But breakthroughs happen by continuing to be faithful and to live that consistency and those disciplines day in and day out in our lives. And that's what we can learn. And on this Mother's Day, that's what I praise God for. All of the mothers who live this life of consistency, that when my world was moving in many different directions and I was going many different ways, the consistency of having Mothers who are praying for you, who are there for you, who are providing for you day in and day out. We live in a culture and in a time and an age where so many moms are hard on themselves. They're comparing themselves, especially on social media, to what all the other moms are doing and those creative ideas. And look at that super mom or that super mom. But everything that we see is not always true. And that's not always what's happening behind the scenes. Mothers, What's the greatest gift of faith that you can provide for your family and for your kids? To have that lifelong consistency, to be in the word, to be praying for them, to be there for them each and every day, to be that consistency in their life in an ever-changing world. That is what a true hero is. That's what Abraham was about. That's what Fred Rogers is about. That's what we as followers of Jesus Christ should be all about to live in those consistency of those disciplines following our relationship with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That is the Christian quest and the Christian walk as every day we live our lives, building them on the promises of God. We bow our heads to pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we're thankful that you enter into our lives and that you send us a Savior in our our Redeemer, Jesus, who came down from heaven and lived a perfect life and died for us on the cross. And that in him, your word tells us that all your promises are true and have been fulfilled. We're thankful, Lord, that you give us hope, that you give us grace, that you give us direction for our life, that you've provided a way of salvation, and that you continue to bless us with your protection especially in this world of ever-changing times. Lord, as a nation, we celebrate one of the greatest gifts you've given to each and every one of us, 
the gift of a mother. Lord, we pray for those on this Mother's Day who are remembering their mom and thanking you for them, even though they are now with you in heaven. And for all of us who still have the opportunity to invest in that relationship with our mothers here on earth, we pray that today that we would reach out with compassionate hearts to share our love and our thankfulness with them. Lord, we know that every good and gracious gift comes from above and that you bless us to be a blessing to others. Lord, as you send us out this week, may people see that we are living our lives built on your promises and that is the reason why we trust and that we are so sure of certainty of our relationship with you even in the midst of uncertain times. We ask this all in the most powerful name of our Savior Jesus. Amen. Friends in Christ, we now have the opportunity as we've been blessed to be a blessing to the kingdom of God in the giving of our gifts, our offerings, our tithes, and our sacrifices. There's a couple different ways that you can give to the Lord and to his church this morning. You can text to give. You can go on our website and sign up for regular giving. Or you can also mail your offerings to the church or drop them off in the church office. It's open Monday through Friday, 8 to 4. We worship the Lord with our gifts. When the ground beneath my feet gives way And I hear the sound of crashing waves All my world is washing out to sea Hidden safe in the God who never moves, holding fast to the promise of your truth. But you are holding tighter still to me. The rock won't move and his word is strong. The rock won't move and his love can't be undone. The rock won't move and his word is strong. The rock won't move and his love can't be undone. The rock of our salvation. Changing grace, the rock will move. The rock. 
Remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Receive the blessing of the Lord. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you as he gives you his favor and gives you what only he can give you, his peace. Amen. Let's sing.
Mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. Thanks for joining us on this Sunday for worship on this Mother's Day. We ask that you have a blessed day in Jesus. We know for some this is a great day of celebration. For others this can be a difficult day and you are in our thoughts and in our prayers today. Join us this week at 9 o'clock every morning for the Morning Devos on the Mount Olive Facebook page. And we look forward to seeing you and worshiping with you next Sunday online at the same time, same channel. Have a blessed week.